Hey guys, Darren here again with another box review. This time I'm reviewing two boxes at one time. 1992 Pacific Plus Football. This is uh, Series 1 and Series 2 both. Um, I wanted to go ahead and uh, there, there was something I needed to kind of research about these and so that's the main reason I did it. But I was also really curious how these came out. This is a set that is not worth very much. There's only one chase card, well two chase cards, that existed in it that were pretty historic. And I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But basically, Upper Decks, or Pacific's second year, the, the card design for their second year was an improvement over the previous year. They were trying to make very, very nice kind of art cards, and they didn't really know how to make them very exciting. While the card backs are very colorful, the card fronts are very colorful, they don't have the engagement that they needed, and so they were trying to earn their stripes. They were just another card set in 1991, and this pinnacle, or this <laughs> Seattle-based company was uh, it, it, it had a tough time getting its name onto the market. And so 92 was the year they needed to try to, to really earn their, their place, and they did so in an, in an unusual way. So, but this is the way the cards looked in both series. And there are 330 cards in each series, so they did the same thing that SCORE had been doing the previous two years which was, it, it worked pretty well. And they, they had a decent number of inserts in the in the packs. So like in series one, they had, uh, check, well, both series they had checklists, but seri checklist one through four, series one, checklist five through eight, or series two. In series one, they had their, their team cards, and then they also had a Steve Largent uh, series of cards. And they didn't come through in the packs very quickly. Uh, series 2, in fact, I only got one insert in the entire box, which was kind of frustrating about that. You would think that with that type of a rarity, these inserts would be worth a lot, but they're actually not. They, ne they never have been. And that's partly because of the overproduction. But the big issue that I had with this was the fact the cards were stuck together. And in Series 1, I only had a few cards that were damaged, not very many. Um, one of the few ones was Tim Brown here. That that one got uh, quite a bit, but I got nervous. Early on, it wasn't too bad, and then it got pretty bad, but if you're just patient, almost all the cards came came apart really well. So the for they basically uh, survived the Series 1. The one big exception was the one card I was really concerned with, which was the Pacific... Uh, picks the pros card and this was right at the end and I've got the card it was stuck too you can kind of see the the foil and that that sucker when it came apart I mean it was over it didn't even stand a chance and that was rough because I only got one and it ate it so be prepared if you ever do one of these boxes the cards are going to be stuck together and don't expect for the Pacific picks the pros cards to survive and that that was a shame but I got the whole set. I got the complete set, which is great. And the doubles, the, the way that you do it, if you go down each line, the card numbers actually seed right together. And you can, it's a really easy way to collate together the set. So that, that's a helpful thing that they do. And it means that when you get a box, you're getting a set. And then you're not getting more than doubles in uh, in terms of the other cards. And these are just the doubles I got in Series 1. I got a second Thurman Thomas, Michael Irvin, Emmett Smith, John Elway, Shannon Sharp, Herman Moore, uh, Sterling Sharp, Tim Brown, and Chris Carter. So a great haul of, of doubles. Now, Dan Marino and Jerry Rice and Joe Montana, none of those players are in this set, which is an interesting thing about the set. And it also kind of hurts the set because there are a couple of stars that, that just don't show up. But in Series 1, those are almost all the stars. Now, I mentioned about how this is a pretty historic set. And what I mean by that is when you go back here to the Patriots, there is one very special card, Ben Coates. Now, when, when this card came out, he was just another tight end. There was nothing special about him at all. But he had a, a stellar season, one or two years after this card was released, and people discovered there was only one rookie card. Now, it used to be that's the way everybody was. You know, Dan Marino, John Elway, they only have one rookie card. But that was unusual at this point, and so this one card popping up, all of a sudden, everybody went, oh, Ben Coates has a rookie card? What is it? Pacific? It was the best advertising Pacific could ever have had. And this card is the reason Pacific was successful. They also had another special rookie card in it, which was their... Let's see, where is, where is he? Is he at the front? 
Yeah, Steve Bono. This is another very unusual uh, rookie card, and this card also kind of holds up in the set. But they didn't really do much in terms of rookies, because this wasn't much of a rookie uh, class. And so, like with 1990 score, they had a couple of rookies stuffed at the back, and we really don't care who they are, because the, none of them um, did anything. Uh, Terrell Buckley is probably the best of the Series 1 rookies. So it's really the Ben Coates and the Steve Bono cards. Those are the big ones in the set. And they're not worth a lot at this point, but the Ben Coates one for a while, it was one of the rookie cards. And that, that, was, uh, that, that basically started the rookie card craze, draft pick rookie card craze that enveloped the entire industry and is now what defines uh, card collecting. I think that's kind of waning a bit. But that's Series 1. Series 2 is very different because the cards were again stuck together, but in this case, unfortunately, these cards did not survive. This is a brick I haven't separated. This is a small brick I haven't finished separating. This is another small brick. This is a, an entire brick I didn't bother to, to open up. Uh, to break apart. I mean, these these things, you could build a house with them. They're foundation level integrity. I was very disappointed, and you might notice that this is my set. These are the, not the doubles, these are the bricks. These are the cards that either uh, didn't survive or I didn't even separate. Now, the first half of the set, this did survive, and these cards came out fine, and so I got the first... Um, looks like the first 111 so that's that's a whole third of the set and then the the second half was about the same and a couple of cards in the middle were able to survive because they were in the good packs okay so fred Mc, uh, mcfair uh, mcfee uh, mcafee is not in great shape here but that's um he's the only one of those that's that's damaged but that's the thing is i got a little over two-thirds of the set but the whole middle of the set is back here destroyed uh, beyond beyond repair so that is a, is a shame and I also I ended up getting a, a not perfect Steve Young so I pulled it aside because it's a Steve Young um, but the these are the valuable cards in the set this is it for series two Barry Sanders Warren Moon Steve Young and a Todd Bowles card and I got kind of two Steve Youngs. I did get two Barry Sanders, so that was good. And then, like I alluded to earlier, there was only one insert in this box, and guess what? It's a Picks the Pros, and it got trashed. So I didn't get any greasy, I didn't get any checklists, I didn't get any of that stuff. All I got was a disappointment here. Now, the reason I got the boxes was to learn about the card backs, and so that told me what I needed to know from that. But it would have been really nice if the Pacific Pros cards could have survived, but they didn't. And I don't know if they are going to survive in boxes at this point. I don't know if these are just horribly stored or if this is kind of what we're looking at now for the Picks the Pros cards, where what, what's already uh, been separated out is all we've got. But it, uh, the, again, the box worked the same way, which is you get the complete set, if the cards survive, if they don't survive, then you're out of luck. But that's that's essentially it. It's I'm, I'm surprised by the fact there was such a difference where all those cards were stuck, almost all those cards were stuck together, but they almost all survived. In this case, all the cards were stuck together and a surprisingly large number were able to not be of any use. I mean, uh, at least one whole column was just completely trashed. And so it was, it was a, it's a shame to, to come out with this with um, almost a whole set, which was nice, but I don't need the set. That's my advantage. I would have to get a whole nother set and hope that this whole section survives. But I do think that by and large they're going to survive. You're, I think you're just going to get a few cards that are going to be damaged. And the fact that you get ab about half again as many doubles gives you a pretty good opportunity if you don't get a, a flat out bricked box. And like I said, even though they were stuck together, they, they did pull apart very cleanly in most cases. You know, Tim Brown here is not helping me out in that regard. Uh, but uh, other than that, but the, the uh, Ben Coates card, that is, that is one of the truly historic cards. If there, if there was a list of the 10 most important individual cards, Ben Coates is right there at the top. It's one of the top two. But that's, that's my experience with going through the Pacific Plus Series 2 packs. 
both series and it was it was a nice experience it was a little nerve-wracking early on once i got into the flow it went pretty well but it's a case where you start off by separating each card out and then you get to actually see who you got that's that's how these packs worked for me and i imagine that most boxes are going to be kind of that way so yeah uh good luck to you on that and um thank you very much for watching